All right, it's the episode that everyone has been waiting for, at least if everyone is a minion player. Minion Balance in Path of Exile 319, the final video in my Development Manifesto TLDR series. If you want to see my live reaction, part 1, part 2, or part 3, those will all be linked in the card, or you can simply follow the playlist that this video will be attached to. Before I get into the video itself, a quick disclaimer. I'm not really a minion player, so I'm not too sure about some of the specifics in regards to this minion build is X% percent higher or X% percent lower, but that's also not a particularly productive discussion since we don't know what the overall mod pool is going to be on minion items as a result of these changes. There are a lot of things that could vastly change how you interact with minions or make minions significantly more powerful, assuming that you use a shield, a wand, and two rings. With that in mind, I think it's best to go into all of this with a grain of salt and treat it as speculation. These are the changes being made, and overall I think the changes are in a good direction. It's going to be very uncomfortable. Most likely, you're not going to be able to play minions the way you have before, but that doesn't mean they're going to be dead. In fact, they could be stronger than ever. We just don't know yet. And it's best to go into these things with that firmly in mind. So that said, what are some of my thoughts on the changes? The first is the general idea of minion balance being based so heavily on gem level and scaling so little on gear. This is something that has been problematic for grinding gear games for a very long time. It's why we've seen some absolutely crazy buffs to minions in the past, and it's also why we've seen some crazy nerfs to minions in the past. But there are very limited options to invest in minions right now on your gear. Usually, your minion investment is gem levels, a couple things on the tree, maybe get some brittle, and after that, your itemization is about personal defenses. So the baseline is too high, and the high end is too low. The idea here is lower the baseline significantly and add new options to invest in your minions. I think this is a good change, because it's going to mean that much like all other skills in Path of Exile, you're going to have a more meaningful experience as you play through the game. It does mean you're going to have a harder time in the acts and while leveling, but it means you'll have a vastly easier time once your build starts to get some decent gear. And there's a few things that I'd like to point out among these changes that are particularly important. The first of which is this. Spectres have been hit very hard yet again, at least at first glance. Spectres have been, for a very long time, problematic in Path of Exile. They're a very powerful persistent minion that scales off of monster skills. For a long time, they were the most overpowered minion and possibly the most overpowered skill in the game. Then they got nerfed, with their level scaling being nerfed more and more and more and more. Now, with losing another level, they don't look to be in a great spot. But who knows? Maybe what this means is you can get plus one to level of raised specter gems as a ring mod. If that's the case, well, number one, that game might be a bit more like Loop Hero. And number two, it means specters would actually be as powerful as, if not more powerful than before. Another very important change is right here. Well, two changes, let's say. Helmets no longer roll plus one to three to level of socketed minion gems. Instead, they now roll plus one to two to level of all minion skill gems. And that wording is very, very, very important. If you are only using one minion gem, then this is kind of a nerf. But if you're using two or more minion gems, this is very likely a buff. At least, sort of. We'll get into more of that when we talk about Necromancer. However, if you're a non-Necromancer, let's say you're an Elementalist Golemancer, or you're a Guardian, this is a massive buff assuming you're using two or more minions and can wear a rare helmet. It's also possible to obtain plus two to level of socketed minion gems as a corrupted implicit on helmets, body armor, boots, and gloves. So if you're using cheap uniques, there's going to be even more reason to corrupt things to get pretty much plus two to free minion gems on your gloves. Let's say you're using triad grips. Well, now they're plus two minion triads, which is going to be a lot of power, especially when combined with plus two from your helmet as well. So I feel like the idea that minions are dead because the level scaling has been changed is a little bit exaggerated here. Now, next up, I do want to talk about Necromancer. Before I do, though, a quick reminder that if you found this video to be helpful, please leave a like and share it with your minion playing friends, as it's a great way to help me out in the algorithm completely for free. On the other hand, if you want to support me more directly, you can do so via YouTube channel membership or Patreon. 
and a special thanks to the support from all my patrons and channel members who allow me to make videos just like this one. If you want to see more content, then there's going to be several related videos linked in the card right now. Or you can go down to the description and find my second channel, where I talk about a variety of gaming topics, including gaming news, with a focus on much more sustainable evergreen content. But more about all that at the end of the video. For now, let's talk about why the change to Necromancer is one of the best changes to fix a bad change in a long time. The problem was that Necromancer's unnatural strength was pretty much mandatory for all minion builds that were not from items. It made it very hard to use other ascendancies, and if you did, very likely you had to be able to afford a Flesh and Flame to grab a Natural Strength. The change is, a Natural Strength is no longer plus 2 to level of all minion skill gems. Effectively, this is why the helmet is plus 2 all. It's taking the stat that was universally applicable to minions, and giving it to all ascendancies, and making the Necromancer one much more specific. It now grants Unholy Might to minions. This is a huge buff if you're doing something like a minion poison occultist. This is also a significant buff to a lot of physical-based minions, so we're going to see some very interesting conversion stuff in the near future. And again, to see how much of a nerf that actually is, we're just going to have to see the stats on items, because who knows, there could be minions penetrate resistances, which would very likely more than make up for it since minion pen is already extremely limited. A couple more problems that were highlighted is investing into minion crit strikes was largely a matter of brittle, and combining that with power charges. So now there are more sources, and I don't think this is going to be all the sources, since the new minion modifiers are also mentioned here, and we'll have to see how high those values roll, or if they're base crit. The goal is to get more minion crit strike chance, so that you can invest into minion crit strike using something like spirit offering, without having to use brittle and having to use power charges, though brittle is still somewhat usable. Now, speaking of Brittle, it was nerfed from 15% effect down to 6, with the baseline effect being nerfed from 5 down to 2. This does affect minions, as a lot of builds used that, but it affects the game more broadly as well. Which is to say that right now, Brittle versus Shock was often not a choice. Brittle offering base crit was simply far more powerful. It was kind of amazing to me to see Brittle buffed a few leagues back, because people weren't using it, even though it was incredibly strong, and then all the support that you needed was pushed over, and it just became insane. It was not a weird thing in 317, 318, or even 316 to just shove Brittle into any old build and consider the build improved. I still think Brittle's going to be good, especially for builds that can't easily scale their crit strike chance, but I think Brittle is also not going to be as dominant now, as it's going to be a lot more in line with Scorch and Shock, and so if you're considering things like Leadership's Price, this is actually a huge buff to the item, because Leadership's Price is much better than the Interrogation now. You might also find out that shocking enemies and being able to freeze them for an extra defensive layer is worth giving up a little bit of crit strike chance. But now, let's get back to some minions. Because another minion change, which I don't think has been getting enough positive attention, is huge. That is, that because minions are monsters, they had a lot of hidden stats that affected your build choices and build power. Now, those hidden stats have been removed. Minions will behave exactly as you expect. Summon Reaper probably isn't getting buffed by this, but all other minions are now getting significant buffs to their ability to use Poison, Ignite, and Bleed. So even if Spectres aren't in a good place, what about a Puncture Spectre? Or maybe you're going to do something like SRS Ignite since it already has innate Fire Conversion. What about a Poison Carrion Golem setup, where you play an Occultist, get all the nice things like Pops, since it's a Poison, thus the kill will be attributed to you, you're using Carrion Golems, and you grab Unholy Might from Necromancer. This is going to lead to the biggest shakeup in the minion meta that I've seen in a very long time. And overall, is a great change for the game, because it pushes build diversity by culling outliers. Does it potentially create some new outliers? Possibly. But you don't have to run utility specters anymore, so you should have a lot more sockets in your gear available. You don't have to feel bad about giving up your shield and potentially dying and you don't have to work charges into any minion build. They're still probably pretty nice, but not absolutely mandatory the way they once were. Again, I'm not going to argue that this isn't a nerf to some builds, or that it won't feel uncomfortable, but I suspect that there's a very good chance we're going to see all sorts of crazy new minion builds and some old favorites returning as a result of these changes. There are, of course, also a whole list of minion skill-specific changes. The goal is to nerf the top end, so things like Absolution and Summon Skeletons are coming down, 
and buff the low end. Things that people aren't really playing, like Herald of Agony or Animate Weapon, are getting a lot of positive changes. It should be noted that Animate Weapon is being made more expensive with no other changes, but because many other things that are getting changes are nerfed, this is in fact a buff. Herald of Agony especially stands out to me, because that was rarely played on a Necromancer anyway, so it gains a lot of the advantages of the changes and the new scaling, with none of the disadvantages of the Necro nerf. I think some of the big winners here, after looking over the numbers and making some guesswork, is SRS Pops. SRS are getting a health bonus, and SRS Pops were already really decent since SRS kind of act as homing missiles. Animate Weapon Poison was already pretty strong. I don't believe Animate Weapon Poison had any previous effects that limited its damage since the animated weapons weren't monsters. Could be wrong about that. But it's going to definitely benefit from the new mods and not having to run buff specters. And item-based stuff like the Black Cane, Soul Rest, or Chains of Command are also big winners, since they scaled far less off of the gem level stuff, and are again able to take advantage of things like the new rings and the new shield. When big changes like this happen, it's easy to think that it's the end of every build you've ever played and loved. But I don't think that's going to be the case. If anything, this is what it looks like to foster true build diversity in Path of Exile. If you try to buff everything up to the level of the strongest builds, you're constantly playing a game of catch up and lose, where you buff everything up to the strongest builds, but then nerf the game globally by making monsters stronger to compensate for the fact that you shouldn't be able to trivialize content as a baseline. If you want to do that, go play Cookie Clicker. I don't think there's any difficulty there, so it should be trivial from day one. On the other hand, nerfing the extreme top end outliers, things like Skelly Mages, Absolution, or even potentially Arakali's Fang, though I think Arakali's Fang, arguably, with all the changes, could come out ahead because it scales really well off Unholy Might. That's possibly a question for another video, and for someone who knows the build better. But nerfing the top end that's already too strong is a good idea. Buffing the bottom end, things like Herald of Agony, Herald of Purity, Summon Phantasm support, brings things into much closer alignment. Balancing in Path of Exile is always a very tough tightrope for GGG to be walking especially because it's not actually about everything being in perfect balance. If it was, your choices wouldn't matter. You wouldn't use one skill over another, aside of liking the theme. And that's just never been what the game's been about. It's always been about meaningful choices that come from opportunity cost. To use one thing, you must give up something else. And I think that this change is meant to foster that. We'll see if it's successful or not. I can't say if in 319 we'll have the most diverse minion meta we've ever had. But I think it's entirely possible that by 320 we will, once players have some time to experiment and realize there's a lot of good things that simply got overlooked for being not as strong as Skelly Mages, there's going to be a surprising amount of amazing breakout builds that come from these changes. So I'm curious, if you're a minion player, do you plan to play an Elementalist, an Occultist, a Necromancer, or a Guardian for your next minion build? Doesn't have to be your League starter, in fact you could even take a League off and come back in 320, but when you do, what do you think you'll be playing Ascendancy-wise? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your support helps keep me independent and allows me to turn down things like sketchy mobile game sponsorships. You can do so for as low as $1 a month over on Patreon. Or if you want to support me completely for free, then you can join the community by hopping into my Discord, link below. If you want more content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts. It's a place that I use to review games, ramble my way through video essays, and a lot more. Or of course, you can just click the suggested video in the card right now. I hope you learned something today, and maybe I'll see you again sometime soon.